Hello and welcome. On behalf of all of us here at Roadmunk, we're very excited to share with you our latest release, Feedback and Idea Management. At Roadmunk, we've been focused on roadmapping for quite some time. It's what got us our start, and over the years we've continuously iterated our functionality and continued to support product teams with top-of-the-line visualization capabilities. But as an organization who creates product software for product teams, it was natural for us to start thinking about our own processes. And we found ourselves thinking that we've honed in on what goes into a roadmap, but haven't quite been able to answer why something goes into a roadmap. We followed this train of thought, and after months of market research, we found that determining what goes into a roadmap is largely influenced by two factors, feedback management and idea management. Feedback is crucial for any business. Your most valuable insights are often coming straight from your customers. But it can be challenging to develop a system in which not only we can collect feedback, but organize and manage it in a way that feedback is making its way to the right people in the organization and then eventually actioned. With idea management, teams can find it hard to validate the ideas they have. And when it comes to idea prioritization, it can often be an ad hoc and overly subjective process that might see teams make incorrect and misinformed decisions. At Roadmunk, our hope is to connect these pieces of the product journey to provide a holistic and connected workflow that allows you to efficiently and confidently communicate your product strategy. So without further ado, let's walk you through our new workflow, including feedback and idea management. You'll notice that the UI has changed since the last time you logged in. I'm going to draw your attention to the left-hand side of the screen as we've upgraded our navigation. With the new module, you'll easily be able to shift between your feedback, ideas, and roadmaps. What you see in front of you is called our feedback inbox, and this is what your collaborators are going to be able to view and use to process feedback that is provided to them. But before we start thinking about how we receive feedback, we have to set up our inbox, and we'll do this by going to Manage Products and Components. Now that our feedback inbox is configured, let's walk you through what the process looks like, from how we submit feedback to how we process it. I'm going to switch to a different account with a different set of permissions, and we're going to shift to the view of someone with a reviewer license, so someone who has the ability to submit feedback, but not process it. As you can see, the view is quite condensed. I can view previous pieces of feedback that I provided, some of which are waiting for review, and some of which have already been processed. I'll select Submit Feedback to bring me to the data entry screen. First, I'll put in who this feedback is from. I can input an organization name, and I can also input specific details about the contact. We always suggest adding in as much detail as possible, as you never know if you'll need to follow up for more information or potentially pass on the good news that their feedback is being actioned. Roadmunk will also store all customers that you've input in the past for easy entry, but you'll always be able to add new customers as needed. Let's say, for example, this is coming from a customer that we know. Just by inputting a letter, I can go ahead and find them from my list. Let's say in this case, it's from Lindsay. And the next stage will be selecting the product area. Our product area will match the products and components that we've set up, and your viewers will be able to submit feedback in a few different ways. First, if they know the specific component that it belongs to, they can directly assign it. If they don't know the individual component, but think it belongs to a specific product area, they can choose it at the product level as well. And finally, if they just want to provide general feedback at the account level, they can do that as well. Next, I can start filling in details about my feedback. I'll put an easy example for us today, so you'll be able to easily see it appear in our feedback inbox. And after that, I'm taken back to my home screen where I can see all of my submissions from the past. Now that we've received our feedback, let's walk through what it looks like for a collaborator to go through their feedback inbox and begin triaging. The first thing you'll want to take note from this screen is how the feedback is currently filtered. By navigating to our drop down menu here at the top left, we'll be able to break down at the component level how many pieces of feedback we have unprocessed and how much we have processed. For example, going into calendar and invitations. It's a great way to see how your feedback is distributed amongst components, but the better way to view while you're actively going through your feedback is by going to my products. 
Roadmonk will automatically filter all of the feedback that is assigned to a product or component that you as well are assigned to, so you can be sure that when this list is complete, you've officially gone through your entire inbox. Now to go through the feedback itself, let's shift our focus to the right side of the screen. While the filter on the left shortlisted all of our relevant feedback, the filter on the right hand side of our screen will show us which product or component the reviewer attached the feedback to. If it was incorrectly assigned, the reviewer will easily be able to redirect it to the correct component. And you'll see this warning screen appear to ensure that you want to complete that action. We'll also be able to see at a quick glance who the feedback is from, who it was submitted by, and the contents of the feedback itself. From there, you'll be able to add comments as needed. You can add additional information if it's warranted, and you'll also be able to tag other Roadmonk users. Whether it's another product owner whose opinion you'd like, or you need the reviewer to answer some clarifying questions, you'll be able to do so and Roadmonk will automatically send notifications to those tagged users. Now jumping ahead to the ideas section, you'll be able to link ideas from within the feedback inbox as well. Without navigating to our ideas page, you'll be able to search or add ideas to individual pieces of feedback. If you'd like to link it to an existing idea, simply begin typing the name of the idea and any matching ideas will pop up. As you can see, I can map it to my custom notifications idea. If you'd like to create a new idea, click Create to fill out all the necessary details when adding in an idea. Let's say, for example, custom notifications doesn't quite fit, and we want to put in configurable notifications. The next step will be assigning the product area. When it comes to ideas, we focused on the product area and not specifically on components because we likely want to see it at a higher level and look at our ideas at a more holistic level. So we'll leave it mapped to calendar. But if we want to list our component as well, just so that we know exactly which component is being addressed, we absolutely can as well. Finally, add any description as needed if you want to have it listed on your idea page. The last action we can complete in our feedback inbox is marking a piece of feedback important. Oftentimes we'll come across feedback that might carry a bit more weight than another piece of feedback. Perhaps it's coming from a high profile customer or something is related to a company initiative of yours. Whatever the case may be, you'll be able to toggle this box here to determine whether it's a standard piece of feedback or more important. Finally, when we're done and happy with all the additional details we've provided, we can mark our feedback as processed. What that will do is move it over to the different side of your inbox, indicating that it has been tracked and any additional necessary actions have been taken. Now we have a great workflow for inputting, collecting, and triaging our feedback. We're ready to move on to our ideas tab. All I have to do now is shift away from my feedback section to my ideas. Now again, we're probably seeing a lot of new things in front of us. So let's start with something simple adding an idea. To do this, we'll go to the New Ideas button. And if you remember from our feedback window, this will be the same view that we had just gone through to add in our previous idea. So let's put another example. Let's say a scheduling tool. We'll align it with our calendar product area. We'll put it with our sharing and we'll leave it without a description. Once our idea has been input, we can now view all of our ideas within a particular product group and begin our process of prioritization. Before we start prioritizing, just like in our feedback section, you can see that we can view ideas filtered in a couple of different ways. Ideas we want to be able to consider at a less granular level, so we view them by product group. That being said, it's valuable insight to be able to see what ideas are in high standing at the organization level so you'll be able to view it at that level as well. So from day one, you'll have access to two out of the box prioritization methods, rice and value versus effort. Rice being a comparison of your reach, impact, confidence, all compared to your effort, and value versus effort being a bit of a simpler calculation, 
looking at our value, followed by our effort. The headers that you see here in your prioritization view, we call those factors, and they can be positive and negative in nature, as seen here with our value being positive and our effort being negative. By adjusting any of the values that you see associated to an idea, you'll also be able to see the scores adjust automatically, depending on how we've changed our score. So I'll call your attention to our value versus effort score here once I switch my value. Some organizations have their own way of prioritizing ideas, and we wanted to provide the flexibility of being able to evaluate using different means. To accommodate that, Roamonk will also allow you to create your own custom views. Let's say, for example, one of the biggest priorities for my organization this year is retention, and I'm going to want to create a retention versus cost view. My first step will be to go into my views and create a custom one. And from there, all I have to do is create the name. In this case, I'll just put retention versus cost. Once created, I can go ahead and start adding factors to my calculation. And to do this, I just have to go to my add factors. In this list, you'll see all the positive and negative factors that have already been created and used in other views. As you can see, I already have a cost factor here, and I'll go ahead and turn that on. Now, I also said I wanted to track retention, but there doesn't seem to be a factor that matches. To create a new factor, I'll go ahead and select Create Custom Factor. This window will take me through three simple steps of adding in my factor. First off being my name. Next will be the factor type, so the way in which I want to quantify this particular factor. And finally, whether it's going to be positively or negatively affecting me. And now I have my view. Now I'll quickly navigate back to our rice view for a minute. If we look at the ordering of the scores that you see here, it may seem somewhat odd that our time zone auto updates idea is showing higher on the list despite having a lower score than our custom notifications. That's because we provide two different views depending on how you want to order your ideas. The first view and the current view that we're in is viewing by priority. And priority is given based off of what the product owner or manager wishes it to be. By taking any of the dots that you see associated with an idea, you'll be able to drag and drop and change the ranking of those particular ideas. If we'd like a view that's less subjective and only takes into account the scores that were given based off of the model that we selected, we can switch our view to the sorted list. And you'll see now my ideas are organized by score and I have no ability to move them up and down. Now with our ideas prioritized, let's drill into the specifics and what types of insights we'll be able to get from our ideas. By clicking on any of the ideas in our list, we'll be able to open up what we call our idea card. We'll quickly be able to see all relevant details about our idea, starting with the idea name, the product area, and component that it belongs to. Now we started our workflow with receiving and managing our feedback, translated that into an idea for us to prioritize, now the last step in our workflow is going to be promoting our idea into a roadmap. The first thing I'll do is type in the name of the existing roadmap I'd like to add it to. In this case, it's going to be my Hooli General Settings roadmap. From there, we'll either be able to link an existing item or create a new one from within this screen. So for my time zone auto updates idea, I'll type in time zone and see what that comes up with. Looks like I already have an automated time zone updates item, so I'm going ahead, going to go ahead and link those items. Going further down the idea card, we'll also have an area to include a description of your item. You can use this to provide additional details, perhaps attract changes to the idea, whatever your organization requires. And similar to our feedback section again, we'll be able to comment and tag users as needed in our comment section. The last piece of information we're going to receive from the idea card 
is what feedback is attached to this particular idea. Right now, I'm only toggled to see important information, but at any time, I can go in and view all pieces of feedback that have been attached to this idea, simply by toggling off show important feedback only. It's a great way to help validate ideas and to quickly have access to all necessary information when speaking to the prioritization or validity of an idea. Now that our idea has made it onto our roadmap, there's only one more section we have yet to explore, and that's our Customers tab. The Customers tab will include the names of all organizations and contacts that have been collected during the feedback stage. Without clicking into a name, you'll be able to see how many customers are in your list, how many ideas are linked to each, followed by the number of pieces of feedback that have been provided by each of your clients. By clicking on any organization, you will be able to view all contacts associated with the organization, and then be able to drill into exactly which idea and which pieces of feedback they've provided. Whether you have a call coming up with a customer that you'd like to provide an update for, or perhaps an idea that it's made its way into a roadmap and you want to find the right contact to share the good news with, your Customers tab will be a great asset for that information. Your reviewers will be able to add customers and contact names every time they go to submit a piece of feedback. But if you want to make their lives a bit easier and pre-populate your customer list, you absolutely can. Simply go to Add Customer, followed by Add Customer again to add an individual organization or contact. Once the organization name is completed, we can go in and add specific contact details. If you'd like to add customers in bulk, you'll also be able to add via a CSV file. That way, instead of just adding them individually, you'll be able to officially add in as many contacts as possible. And with that, that was our last feature from our latest release. Let's do a quick recap of what we covered today. First, we went through how to set up your feedback inbox, followed by how to receive and process that feedback. Then we moved on to ideas, idea creation, followed by our prioritization. And then ultimately, how this can all be linked back not only to your roadmaps, but directly to your customer base. We hope you're as excited about the new functionality as we are. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to our support team. Thanks for watching and have a great day.